Last session, I was showing you how to just soak things with the bushy yates, these um, seeds of the bushy yates. And um, here we are. This is the result. This was just soaking maybe just for about two days. And then the same pot, after I took this out, I then put it on simmering, got it to a simmering. Same wool, same plant, one cold, just soaking, a couple of days, boiling, about an hour, or simmering, an hour, let it cool, and look how beautiful they marry together. And um, so you don't always have to boil and sometimes soaking, and I've got quite a few things soaking outside. Sometimes it might take a day, sometimes two days, sometimes three weeks. But wool and silk is easily put in a bark bath or something for two, three weeks, it, depending also on the weather. If it's a hot day, well, you know, it really starts to get going. But um, you don't always have to keep boiling. Now I'd like to talk about all the things that are around you in the kitchen. These are common brown onions. You have them in your kitchen. All these wonderful things that you're going to use, these are the red onions. Normally, now, you've done your cooking, all this, when you've peeled them, would all be thrown away. All your cooking things, you normally would just put in the mulch or but all these things you would normally throw away, all waste products, all give the most beautiful colours. We will I would now like to show you the colours of these wasteful things that you know these uh, it's just amazing what some parsley will do for you and avocado pips and skins you'll be surprised at the colors now also last this is actually a bush tucker remember when we sh we did the most beautiful pinks with the stems and the flowers well, these are the roots of how this plant grows. Look how beautiful red it is. But we don't use that. We let them grow, the rhizomes, and because you'll get more and more, and when they flower, we'll get the pink. So I don't use this. This one you can eat. It's a bush tucker and it tastes between curry and pepper and is delicious. Just would like to show you that there's lots and lots of things that we just don't know about, which are absolutely wonderful, and we have to get advice from indigenous people on all these wonderful bush tuckers. Um, all sorts of things will pick up color, and of course, very often it can be used to enhance your textiles for your. See my buttons? They would, and they would just put in a bit of jarred dye, just to give it a bit of colour. I would um, now like to show you how to actually mark your pots, and then we'll go on to doing some parsley. What I like, what I do is I get my pot, of course I mark it, and I put some wool, it can be threads of wool, or this is just cut off an old woolen blanket. I then tie it onto the handle, one wool and one piece of silk or cotton or whatever you're going to dye on the other handle or many things. Then I put my 
put it inside my pot so when I am dying I can sort of lift it up and see what's happening to the color and if I need to boil it another half an hour or if it's still too light so I've got my samples already in my pot then I will now get the parsley so there's my little bunch of parsley and I will put it in and of course cold water and here I have mint broccoli and if you of course want to eat your broccoli but you're cutting off the stems which I usually put in soup but sometimes they're pretty tough cut them keep everything all of it will give you color so um, the um, coriander will give a different green to the mint or the parsley and of course you all know it's the roots and the stems that give the best flavor in your cooking um, mint is a lovely lovely color and rosemary mint is actually a beautiful color and there's two different types of mint there's this long leaf fluffy mint and then there's this one which I just picked out of my garden. They even have different smells. And so the, when the smell is different, very often the color is different too. This is rosemary, absolutely gorgeous in cooking and for color. And of course, we did do some purple carrots. And we now have these yellow carrots but the, if you're growing your, themselves, the green on top actually gives one color and these will give another color. That's if you're growing yourself and you've got lots of carrots growing. And um, here is silver beet and in the stems of the silver beet, you wouldn't believe it, in silver beet and spinach, there's a small bit of oxalis in there, which is a mordant and gives another lovely, lovely green. And I, and I have just picked this this morning out of my garden. And tonight, we'll be eating it. But I will keep all the stems, because I'll only eat the green leaves, keep all the stems, boil them, and I've got some light oxalis well you can see already what this is going to give you and if you want to you can just boil them or whatever you're going to do these you're not well sometimes the young leaves you eat but if the old leaves you don't eat you put all of it you boil it take these out because you've got the color in your water in the water and then you take these out separately, you can eat them and use the water later on for colouring. So as you can see normally, and of course lovely avocados. Now avocados, the pips of the avocado and the skin, you can keep the skin separate, it'll give you another slight look of, would you believe, pink, most lovely dusty rosy pink from the pips but if you put the pips and the skin together slightly different color if you only do the skins another slightly different pink put them together so three colors coming out just of your avocados you've just had on toast keep them don't throw them away or start growing them Now, also, there is the galangal and the ginger. Ginger, the plant, gives a color, but also, you wouldn't believe it, the ginger 
It's a slightly different taste to the galangal. This is very much used in Indonesian, in Indonesian cooking. Uh, it's slightly milder or a different slight of taste than the ginger. So different countries use different herbs. I just love it all. <laughs> so the smell is beautiful. It's wonderful in even little slice of tea, a slice of ginger in tea in lemon verbena which I grow in my garden. It's just delicious. Also gives a colour. And, you wouldn't believe, it's also a slight mordant. Your tea and coffee, this is the colour of coffee. This, yesterday I used my tea bags and look, I just threw it on. And here, so there's tannin in tea. It's a mordant. So, if you just boil all your old tea bags and throw your silk or cotton or something in there, you'll get this color, which is slightly different, of course, to the coffee color. It's a tannin, and you can brighten other colors with all your old tea bags, which is the tannin you're putting in your dye. So now I shall put cold water in my parsley and we will now walk over to the to the stove and I'll show you, because I did some yesterday, I'll show you the colours it gives in the stainless steel pot like this and the copper pot. My copper pot, I didn't want to do the cast iron one, I have enough blacks, uh, greeny blacks. So, but I also wanted to do some threads that I can stitch some of this fabric with, which is completely matching. So up here, I had some old, thin cotton thread. I have put that in. I wound up some on a um, old wooden reel. So now I've got some lovely several little greens to start and to keep it in I just put a lucky band there so I've got some really nice colors to stitch with you know you can't buy this you have to make it yourself and why not while you are boiling putting some old threads some uh, sewing thread even the white ones embroidery thread, colour them all yourself to match exactly all the textiles you're going to stitch with. It's easy and it's all there for you. Only filling it to about there. My parsley is in. My samples are in there. I'm now putting in my little skein of wool, my skein of wool, my wet silk and wet wool, remember everything always wet when you put it in, and the lid on, bring it slowly to the boil, and when it's boiling, when it's just starting to boil, let it simmer and we'll get a lovely green. Here I'm going to, I've got my avocados already boiling, slightly simmering, because this time I would like to get the colour out, get my avocados out, then I'll put my silk and wool in. So tomorrow when this is cool and I've got the colour, then I, tomorrow when it's cool, when I like the colour what's on my silk and wool, I will then put my silk and or cotton and wool in because then I know exactly what colour it's going to give me. This is today, this is tomorrow. Here I've also made the look of the brown onion skins. 
and they're in there but this is going to be the colour on silk and this is going to be the colour on wool and of course it's been boiling about uh, just over half an hour so my red onion skin will give me a much more redder redder brown so this is more a yellowish brown the other one will give me a red brown all different colors greens browns pinks there are so many different shades but I'm going to cool this like this one take all the onion skins sieve it tomorrow take all the old onion skins out then I know exactly the color I'm going to get when I put my new wool and new silk in there when it's cold tomorrow with onions we don't need any mordants I'm not quite sure the name of the chemical but when you peel onions and you get watery eyes that's the chemical that sets it so you never have to use anything the onions have got it all there themselves you don't need to do a thing it gives you color tomorrow I will be when the onion skins and my pot is cool I will be sieving it out having the nice clean clear water no, not clear water, nice dyed onion skin water with no onion things in there, skins. And then I will put my, when it's cold, I will put my silk and wool in there and I'll know exactly what colour it's going to give me. And I will do the same thing with the avocados. And so that's coming out tomorrow. The parsley, we've already seen the colour. So this is my next lot, the lovely soft green. So when I let this cool overnight, that will also come out. All right, um, this is a week later, this uh, solar dyeing, and see how the onions, Celine and I did this together, and she picked, Celine, did, was it that? Yep. That tree there, the bushes there. So look how the color is changing. There's the silk and the wool. Here is the purple, uh, purple carrots, water, the acid, and this is the alkaline. And look at the different colors. So, and this is only one week. Here, Greg, who was making the, my front door, which is Jarrah, these are the shavings that I gathered up without him knowing. <laughs> and I put, the, put silk and wool in here and look at the color of just the shavings of the wood work that he was doing. So it's becoming a lovely creamy and it's only one week. It'll just get darker with time. Goldenrod goldenrod. Uh, this one was the uh, Bushy Yates. This one is actually old coffee. So onions. This one will take longer. It's um, I can't think of the herb but I'll I'll let you know soon. I'll let you know. These are the avocado skins but of course it's going to give a completely different color and the pips in the sun, the solar dyeing, than it will when it's boiling. But I like to have them both. This one, the river gum, this is alkaline and this is just ordinary water. But the eucalyptus takes a lot, lot longer, as Celine knows. This one is fast, that one faster, wasn't it? This one is taking, is going to take a few weeks. That's the eucalyptus for you.
rainwater on my old blanket piece. It's wool. Now, Celine will put some salt on it. It just speeds up the rusting part. And if Greg can now put in some lemon juice, or you can use vinegar, but I like using whatever is growing around me, just sprinkle some lemon juice. Yep. Again, it speeds up the rusting. Now we shall put some of these lovely old rusty bits. Celine, do you want to start? We we'll just put some rusty bits that I've been hunting and gathering all over the place. This is the inside of mattresses. So when you get an old mattress, you just put some nice pieces in a nice way because all these will give you the wonderful rusty marks. Lay it in a very interesting way. These are around you everywhere. You can go to um, you can go to any place. You'll find rusty bits. Rust was one of the first first dyes in the Iron Age. It was literally almost the first dye. And try and get rust out of things. It's almost impossible. After. Uh, when the Iron Age came, that's when rust happened. And there's some really interesting things. Now, of course, this is iron. So this is a handle of something. And I'm just thinking, actually, wouldn't it be nice to have... I'm just moving this. Two eyes and a smiley face. How about that? <laughs> so you can really, yep, play, play. Yeah. Now this one is copper that Celine is. So this one will give the greeny tinge. Iron will give you the browns. This one is. Shall we put one here? Yeah. One here. One there. Okay. Okay, it's just amazing what we, what you can find. This has taken me a long time, but um, and of course horseshoes for luck. Keep it up. A circle around the circle, perhaps. And what about this is a nice one. Some mechanic has given this, left it for me to use. And Greg, I got a whole lot of nails here. There's a whole lot of nails there for you. I just bent this bit of wire in an interesting way and hopefully it'll give an interesting pattern. It's so nice to play with rusty old things and you afterwards it has a memory and it will tell you what you did and of course when you finished you just put it back in your bucket and you can use it over and over and over. And you can use the rusty materials. This can be cotton, silk, anything will rust. And then we will, um, we can over dye it in other colors because natural dyes never, ever, it keeps on separating. So the rust will all stay and you can enhance it with different colors. The different color techniques of um, different flowers and different leaves we shall put on this next week. So, 
more water, more salt, over the top of all this. So I'll do the water, you do the lemon. <gasps> Maybe we cut the lemon and squeeze it, if you like. And, and you just need to dampen it really well. And Greg's going to get some more lemon juice. And Celine more. Yes. And just squeeze. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Somehow on the cooking shows, these men go. And you've got to be strong to do this. You can actually. Let's see, put the lemon there when you're finished. Because it's acid, it might just make a good mark. Let's put those lemons, not throw them away, squeeze them and put them somewhere. Where's the other blank? You know where the other blank is. What we can do now, see, yep, you can just leave it somewhere. Actually, what you can also do is get a leaf and you can actually put a leaf underneath, everything will rust. around the leaf. Ooh, there's a lovely bee coming to the lemon. Where did we put the other... Shall we put the other leaf somewhere? It might give a colour or... We do this, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll just throw these on. Now, Celine has got another piece of blanket and if you too, yep. it's an old blanket got from the op shop, opportunity shop and it says standard chill proof all wool blanket made in Australia. Australia is the country for wool. Now, if you just lay it out nice and even over this, I'll get some water. And sprinkle some more water and a bit of salt. dampen it and of course we have got plastic cover now I don't like plastic but in this case I'm using this piece of plastic over and over and over so what we might do is perhaps fold it fold it this way and then that way do you think and you can fold it from there. So it's really covered up and the sun, the heat of the sun and all the moisture in there is going to really make this rust. Which will never ever come out. And then we can use this rusty material or flooring have this old black sort of plastic when they finish with them these building sites and you see them all in the 
just ask him, can I have that old black plastic of you, please? And then it keeps on being used. See, you can see the rust spots. It's been used many, many times. Now we, not, we need to put something so the wind won't blow it away. So we'll put some bricks just to keep it down. And also it's good to, to um, have a bit of pressure so some of these iron bits will just really have pressure. It's a bit like printmaking really. So now we just wait a few days, a week, it, depending again on the weather and the time of the year. Then we just, you can open it a bit, have a little peep and see how well it's rusted. If you think, a mm, few more days, a few more hours, a bit of heat, then um, you just leave it another few days. And in a few days, we'll show you what happened. We'll unpack it. Hello everyone, in this session uh, I'm going to show you uh, all the wonderful things with all the things that I've been picking yesterday and the day before of my own property and which is all in forest and bush and, and some of my plants uh, for instance don't let your vegetables go to flower you'll get seeds but if you, if you pick them you'll get more salads and my geraniums I picked all these this morning so I'll show you how you can use all these things and if you kind of squeeze your fingers sometimes in some have a look at the purple that's coming out so you've got a dye you pick a flower squeeze it with your fingers if you've got some dye on your fingers you know it's going to be give you a color so we'll be using all these. Um, these here, the um, Coreopsis, the fresh ones, I, have, I pick and pick and pick, then I dry them, and then I put them in little glass jars when they're completely dry, and I save them for when they stop flowering. I've got all my, um, I've got all my Coreopsis dried. So when your hollyhock is flowering, especially the red ones, you dry them and you keep them for when they stop flowering and you'll always have wonderful things on hand. I'm going to be using some of my dried hollyhock because um, they're not flowering now, they're just coming up. So you listen to nature and you dry them when they're flowering. This morning I picked up a whole lot of eucalyptus flowers off the ground, off the floor, under the eucalyptus tree. And I think the cockatoos had a little party and um, they were all on the ground. So I'll be using these too. And sometimes when I have dried things, oh, um, the leaves are a bit sort of stiff like really or when I have the leaves from underground and the little leaves so they're a little bit stiff so I just wet them I just put them in a bit of water overnight and I just soak them and then they're nice and pliable so I can roll them up easy this is carry a hot <coughs> eucalypt eucalypt River gum or Mary, uh, yes, river gum or Mary, and here I've just been soaking the old leaves of the carry, and um, I can use it now because they're all nice and pliable. 
and I've got onion skins, brown ones, red ones. You can just about use everything. Here we've got some lovely she oak, which is just growing um, behind me there on the property. So, so these are all the things I will show you how to manage to roll them up. Here I've got some just some lovely seeds of different things and believe me sometimes you get a really lovely mark from the seeds. First of all I'm going to show you old tins when you have um, some tins keep them because it's very nice to use them and I'll just show you these bits of old um, blankets, all I did was squash them in a tin and boil them. And that's it. All I've got, when it comes out, I've got these lovely materials. This one was in another, but I just put it in and boiled it. So I'm going to match these two together and make something. These are all the bits that I was hanging in my pots to see what color they gave. And guess what? I'm going to be using all of these lovely things together for a wogger or a blanket or a coat or something. So all it was, get your tin, see there's the rust. Stick it in. You can even wrap flowers or something into it or leaves. Boil it in your old tins. So, very handy to have. And after a while, when they've really rusted out, well, they just go in the bin. Now, I would like to show you how to actually roll these up and start making these. So, I'll... First put a few of my Coryopsis, dried ones. I can also use a fresh one. Good to use a fresh one because that's, they're flowering now. Okay, I shall then put some Mary. Mary or river gum, same thing. Put a few leaves on here and there. Perhaps a few other leaves. Just place them in a nice sort of have a look and say, hmm, there's a bit of an empty spot. I'll put a, a leaf here, this way, overlapping. And perhaps a few of these flowers. I can put the flowers this way, or that way. You'll just get a different imprint. Some other leaves overlapping. All happy together. All these eucalypts. Because we all actually live together like this. How about some lily? Irises. And that's flowering right now too so I'll be picking 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 because the more you pick the more you get with everything broccoli um, what shall we do some onion skins but I think I'll tear them a bit this will give a totally different brown to perhaps these And I think I might put one of my favourites. Uh, where is it? 
Where's my Shiite? Here's some Shiite. If you look at the Shiite, you can almost see little stitches. Have a look at one little. Just hold that for us, Trudy. I'll zoom in on it and then. Oh, look it. at the look at the leaf of the Shiite. It almost looks like little stitches. It's just beautiful when you really look at it very closely. And of course you can just sprinkle it here and there. It gives a lovely sort of blackish mark. It really looks like um, very unusual she-oak. And of course there's different she-oaks too. But when you really look closely at every leaf and really observe it there's beautiful patterns in it and of course on this side it's got this pattern and on that side it's that pattern so you can copy that pattern if you want to stitch back into the leaf afterwards now you can use PVC piping to roll things around but when I'm trimming the trees in that which I trimmed these to get some leaves to dry and it needed to be trimmed because it was getting too big I just now use this instead of P PVC piping but if you want if you can't get it, then just use PVC piping I now simply roll it up tightly and I will get a print on this side and on that side I could also put a another piece on, on top and I would have a print here and a print there but the backs would be sort of blank so I'm rolling this up this is a wool from an old blanket which I got in the op shop I'm very lucky and now I will I've just um, I'm now going to just tightly sort of rip it with and these are just old sheets that I've just ripped up and I keep using them over and over and sometimes I wash them and I tie things up with it very tightly I now tie it up I leave an end here to tie it off with at the end otherwise you're stuck you might not get and I tie it up very tightly you can do it with string you could do it with old bits of rag it's just the tighter you bind it the bigger pattern you get it's like printmaking all these leaves will um, give you a print when you boil them now you can boil them you can steam them and I've run out so all I'm going to do is get another bit a bit more on and go back and I just go back the tighter you make it the better print you'll get and if you are print makers the tighter you bind that wheel the tighter print and the best print you'll get this is almost exactly the same and then there's my bit that I left before and I tie it off and that's it I now just put it in my uh, I can put it in the iron pot in a minute and I do exactly the same with a piece of cotton I might put other leaves in but this is wool which will give a different effect of course to cotton and then I'll have a piece of silk and after that I've got a scarf here which I she borrowed and I've worn it and worn it and worn it 
I'm now going to put some more flowers in and over dye it and see what happens. It'll be another new scarf. Just unrolled this one, but now we will start unrolling this one. Let's have a look. So this has been in boiling for a couple of hours yesterday and oh, today I'm unrolling it and it's also very exciting because it's like pottery. When you open that kiln, you just think you've done everything right. And let's have a look now what's, gonna, what's happened. And very often, you've got, it takes, when you open that kiln as a potter, which I once was, I have almost the same feeling when I unwrap my boiling things. So, let's have a look. This was a big piece of, um, of ooh, quite dark because I boiled it in a cast iron pot. See how the she oak and some of the leaves, the colors they've given, and of course it's wet. So I'm now going to rinse it, just in water, and I didn't put iron in it at all, but I put, boiled it in an iron pot. So here's my piece of silk that's come out. I just wash it. The iron um, pot has given a beautiful colour. The eucalyptus oil which is in the trees is my mordant. And here is the piece of silk which has come out of yesterday's boiling. And this was the now what I do is, I just put all my plants that I had around it, that are rolled up with it, into a nice basin, and of course all this goes back into my garden for mulch. Let's have a look. This one I rolled up on a railway sleeper, but I put string around it, so this string cotton string I'm going to keep because that will be wonderful for stitching. I just want to keep this string because it'd be wonderful for me to wash it and use it for stitching. Just lost me a bit of string. Where are you, string? Here. Lost it again. Where? <laughs> ah, here it is. No. Nope. Oh, just not. I won't say. Come on. 
string. You wouldn't believe how important bits of string become sometimes. <laughs> but this is becoming a bit tedious, so I'm just going to cut it. I think I tied it up so tight that I now can hardly untie it. <laughs> but I've still got bits of string. Sometimes you're just too good, make it too tight, and you know, everything has an effect. So next time, a little bit looser, Trudy, a little bit looser. Now I have no idea what will happen if, because I've tied everything to one iron bolt or from the railway sleeper. So let's have a look. It's going to be very dark. But of course things are always dark when they're darker when they're wet. Well, still not bad. Not bad. It'll make a nice piece. Insert insert into somewhere. Now this one is cotton. Let's have a look what the cotton has done. Oh, must not forget me bit of string. Don't want to go that into the mulch heap. Okay, cotton. Different altogether. See the she oak? See the gum leaves? See how the cotton has moved and worked? And that was just around a lovely stick of the eucalyptus cinerea when I trimmed it. So now you know, you just wash that stick and you think, that's a good one to wrap around. And this is what I got. I'll just give it a rinse. Cisco. So here is my cotton. Nice on both sides. I'll just move these, let them dry, and here is the cotton. Completely different to silk, and the wool will be even different. And this, of course, will never wash out. This will stay exactly like it is. And, as I said, you look at a leaf and you can always stitch back into this. And this now will go into my mulch. Now this one, these ones I have done all in the cast iron pot. But this one here I have just put in a stainless steel pot. Now this is a steamer which I, you buy in um, Oriental Hut um, supermarkets for steaming the, the, the buns and that. And you can just layer these full 
Now I've had this about 10 years and so the lid has come off, the handle has come off, but all I do is and boil away or steam. Steaming will give you another effect. This was the blanket I put in and boiled for about an hour and a half, two hours, about two hours I would say, very just slowly boiling on my wood stove last night, this morning, cool and I'll see what happened because this one, no iron, no, because iron after all is a mordant, no copper, nothing, just water and the leaves that I uh, bundled in here. So, oh no, that's the wrong one. Here. So, this one I never I didn't roll it around anything I just rolled it up onto itself so I could lay it circular way into the into my steamer it is actually called a steamer because You want to see what I'm doing, eh? So, I'm going to cut a lot away. Okay, there's my blanket. Ooh, some nice colours in here. Look, this this leaf has given me most beautiful orange there's some seeds this when it dries up will give me green there's some she oak oh and there's some iris a bit of lemon so i'm just going to unroll it and look what's happened so this is going to be part of my wagga which is the Australian patchwork blankets. That's what the men made. There's a whole wonderful story about it. They were old wheat bags and which started in Wagga Wagga. That's why they're called Waggas. And then the women discovered it, the wives of the men. And they started stitching and making their own blankets and quilts and jazzing them up. So there is my piece of blanket. Just the colours from things I put in. And when it's dry, the oxygen in the air somehow oxidises it and makes it even better. So this is going to be... These pieces of she oak, they will pop up once it's dry. It really, and of course the edges, and here was the outer edge, and there you can see my string or my my ties, which is also very interesting somehow. So there's my wool with nothing, just in water and the plants. And there's a whole lot of mulch for my garden. Here I've got one which I already ironed. This is it, this is what it came out of, and there's my piece. Might stitch that into something. This orange is so vivid, isn't mm. it? That's the silver dollar gum. That's amazing. Mm. 
amazing. But all these seeds, pods, where you see, where are they? They will stay as an imprint. These, these little uh, she oaks, they will stay somewhere. I saw a lot of nice little imprints of the seed. All this will stay in the wool, you know, like all these little, which is so lovely once it's dry. And the smell, you just rinse it and it's eucalyptus and it's almost moss proof now, moth proof too as well.